Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're getting back into the naval aspect of DCS and revisiting a unit that we've already looked at. Now the reason we're revisiting it is because when I started looking at the ships on my own, I didn't know anything about the naval aspect. I just did it and I've learned since then and I've got Daishi with me now who's you know knows, knows much more about the naval side of things. Say hello Daishi. Hello. Uh, and, well, we just want to revisit it because it's an important element of DCS, especially this particular unit. We're going to be looking at hull number, cruiser hull number 65, USS Chosen, which is of the Ticonderoga or Ticonderoga uh, class of cruiser. Before we start, I should say there's well, two things. One is that we've got this big master document that we create for all of the ships in DCS uh, with lots and lots and lots and lots of data because it's interesting. It's something we're interested in, as you can see here. Um, and you're going to be welcome to this document. We will link it in the video description and you can come and view it. And if you find any errors or changes you want to make, a bit like Wikipedia, speak to D and you guys can hash it out. Second thing is, because I knew we were going to remake this, there is someone who served on the Ticonderoga, I think the actual Ticonderoga hull, who I promised they can come and join in when they uh, when we redid this. And I've looked everywhere, try, I've been trying to find them. It's a few months ago. I've been looking all over my social media, all over my Discord history, all over my email history, YouTube, and I cannot find them. So I apologise that I've left you out, but I have tried, spent the last hour and a half trying to find you. Uh, anything from you, D, before we start blasting through? Also, if you wanted to do a follow-up, that'd be interesting, because I did serve a long uh, we, we, could always do, we could always do a, like a kind of interview, a follow-up interview. What I'd say is that this is going to be a massive long video, and I'm not going to try and hurry it because just you know you can't hurry something like this. It's so big. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, go and get yourself a coffee, a tea, sit down, and we're going to blast through things. So let's start off with the class details. Ticonderoga class cruiser. When first envisioned, there will be little errors and typos and stuff because you know this. It's, it's real life, real people putting this together, but it's fine. First envisioned as a guided missile destroyer, DDG, using the Spruance class destroyer as a base using the new Aegis CCS. I'm sorry to stop myself so quick, but can you remind me Aegis? It's the, it's the whole sensor system, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, the whole combat control system. So it's sensors, computers, everything. With the intention to accompany a strike cruiser, a potentially nuclear cruiser with a speciality towards strike using weapons such as the Tomahawk missile. However, this project eventually failed, leaving the Ticonderoga, or Tyco, or Tico, sorry, we're not really been sure exactly how, uh, for sure, to fill the role of the cruiser, likely due to the cruiser gap controversy uh, occurring at the time. The US justified the designation of a cruiser by the power that the Aegis CCS brought and the ability to house command staff. However, this had the effect of blurring the line between what makes a destroyer and a cruiser. There are two different versions of the Tikaran Ticonderoga Tico <laughs> class that first equipped uh, the, the first equipped with two times Mark 26 twin armor launcher so an arm launcher is something that you'd see in um like the oliver has perry oliver have oliver hazard perry class frigate right we'd have a missile on an arm it would fire the missile then go down and grab another missile from the magazine and, and, and that's right isn't it uh d yeah some of the early ticonderogas had those two but they they're like two launchers whereas the uh frigates only have one roger right now the problem with that is i'm sure there's many problems but one of the problems is rate of fire obviously whereas a vls you can have a very high rate of fire these launchers are loaded from underneath the launcher and fire the standard uh, uh, SM-2, standard missile, or ASROX. They were planned to also be modified to fire Tomahawk missiles, but the creation of the Mark 41 vertical launch system, we'll call that VLS today, ended these plans very fairly quickly, as they can launch missiles at a much faster rate and be ready to fire quickly. The other 22 would be armed with the Mark 41 launchers capable of launching SM-2s and ASROX, but also Tomahawks. And that's what we've got in DTS. As they remained in service, the options would grow to include more advanced missiles and new missile designs. The Mark 26 equipped cruisers would not uh, Mark 41 have Mark 41 launchers installed on them, and this was deemed too expensive. So there are are there actually Ticonderoga class cruisers still out there with the arm launchers? Do you know? They all were retired somewhere around like the the mid. Mid uh, 2000s because of uh, cost saving measures. 
Roger, okay. Uh, the first five were retired... Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I keep asking questions and then find it. That's what I do. Uh, the first five were retired early as a cost-saving measure, and it's been considered uh, 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 retiring others early as well sometimes. These plans were likely brought uh, to halt thanks to the failure of the 21st Century Surface Combatant Programme, relying on the Zumwalt, sorry for the pronunciation, class to be successful. As a result, the Cruiser Modernization Program was launched to start upgrading later cruisers to remain in service at least 20 years or so after receiving the upgrades. So far, the Cowpens pronunciation, CG63, has completed the program and is in back in service with others undergoing the upgrades under, uh, upgrades under the program. It is likely to undergo cruisers will remain in service until the 2030s, so that's 50-year lifespan? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, when the next uh, set of cruisers are likely designed. How interesting. So, And this is something we see with most of the hulls, isn't it? They they go through a series of modernizations, two or one or two or three modernization series along their life. Um, yeah, it's just the speed of technology. <laughs> right. Will, out of interest for the layman, when they do get upgraded, so for instance, hull number 65, when that gets upgraded into the next kind of class, if you like, um, does that get a new hull designation, or does it stay hull 65 at that point? It still remains hull 65. Right. Okay. And that's that's one problem we find because if we talk about we talk about a hull number, let's say hull number 65 in history, you have to research which was it prior pre you know prior to modernization or after post modernization. So, do you see a specific info? So the Ticonderoga class guided missile cruiser Ingalls shipbuilding pincer Kula, Florida, yard number 4515, CG hull number 65, USS Chosen, Cozen, not exactly how sure we pronounce it, laid down, sorry, go ahead. Yep. I think Chosen's right. Mm -hmm. Laid down, 22nd July 1988, so these are old, even now they're pretty old beasts, you know, 40, 30, 40 year old things going about. Uh, it was launched uh, 89 and commissioned in 91, that was quite a long time before no, that's fine. No, it was only three years. Three years is normal. Uh, 27 of the type were completed. 22 are active at the time of making this, we believe. Two laid up, five retired. Remind me what laid up means? Uh, laid up in this case means they're in dry dock undergoing all the upgrades. Oh, right. Okay, fine. General characteristics. Displacement. Light, uh, let's say, uh, just over 7,000 tons. Fully laden, just under 10 thousand tons so that is yeah that is cruiser isn't it yep yeah length we've got uh 570 feet in my unit beam 55 feet draft 34 feet it's quite hard draft than is is a cruiser isn't it speed i'm guessing that's flank speed at 32.5 knots which is pretty good for a cruiser i think and that's Getting on towards kind of frigate speed. Uh, range, 6,000 nautical miles at cruise of 20 knots. Uh, 3,300 miles at 30 knots. A crew, 383. Uh, accommodation for 405. Very good. It's a big ship, that is. Forget how big yeah. the cruises are sometimes. Um, yeah, when I was on the, the spruits that was on uh, Cushing, I can say that these things, they were like docked right next to them. They're Pretty decent. <laughs> oh, Roger. Okay, engineering. Uh, right, so four times General Electric LM2 2500-30. These are uh, uh, COGAG, combined gas and something. Sorry, what was COGAG? Uh, combined gas and gas. That means you've got two different uh, gas turbine generator. or uh, two. I mean, two gas turbine engines going into one shaft through right. a... Uh, like, think of it as like a gear shaft, main production gear, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, uh, so we've got four, and we've got 21,500 shaft horsepower each. So that's getting on for 90,000 horsepower uh, gross, um, which is quite a, which is a decent amount. Um, and what was our weight again? 10,000, just under 10,000 tons full, okay. We've got two shafts and variable pitch, pitch, pitch. Props. Take a sip of tea, everyone. Let's move on. Systems. Now, this is a real big 
beast. This is probably the biggest one we've done from systems, and we've done carriers. We've done everything now, haven't we? Um, can you quickly explain, roughly explain the color designation and any other designations you want before we start cooking through them on this uh, chart? The color codes I got, basically um, with this, I'm mimicking, uh, there's a guy called Charlie015 on the internet. He color codes uh, different systems on on ships to show what they are. It's like green is kind of like surface or or like a general purpose thing. Uh, blue is usually oriented towards uh, like SAMs or air. Uh, green is, I oh, was sorry. Yeah, uh, orange is oriented towards like guns. So like your sea whizzes and such. I chose red to represent uh, underwater, like uh, mm -hmm. anti-submarine. Uh, Okay. Yellow is anything like uh, electronic warfare, and uh, purple designates anything for like a surface target or ships more specifically. Right, and remember those colors because we'll be looking at them later in the images. Let's blast off radar fire control radar. So we're starting with the SPS 64 V9 um, with a range of up to 37 kilometers surface search and navigation. So the civilian equivalent of the RM 1226X. So this is the kind of thing that looks like a kind of uh, hammerhead shark spinning around that we see on on civilian vessels, right? Yep. Uh, this one will have like a blue stripe on it that says Furuno. Right. Okay. Um, we've also got the SPS 55, 65 kilometers range, surface search and navigation uh, naval radar. Um, yep. It's probably going to look like a similar thing, I'd imagine. Yeah, this one's just going to be all grey. Roger. Next, we've got the SPS 49 V7 or 8, depending on variants. Now, this is the, one of the big ones. This is up to 463 kilometers. So that's almost unbelievably far, far for a radar. So wonderful thing about having a ship is that you can add the weight of a really heavy, powerful radar system. Obviously, you just can't have something as powerful as this on an air, aircraft for obvious reasons. But it's lovely having a plane, uh, 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 the ability to have it on a ship. And uh, we've got up to 90,000 feet, basically, you know, as long as you ever you know, need to go 100,000 feet, whatever that is. This is a two-dimensional um Air to air, A A W. Air to air. What is that? Um, anti aircraft uh, warfare. I don't know why I said air to air. I think that's I, what it is. I'm sure you're right. I, yeah. Anti, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that looks like what it's going to be for. It has I F F M T I. Uh, shoot. I'll leave that. I on. think it was multi, multi uh, like a multi target indicator or something like that. Okay. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, it can rotate 6 or 12 RPM. That's... It's a slow... That's really fu That's really slow. Is it really RPM oh, yeah. or um, RPS? Yeah, MTI represents a moving target indicator. Roger. Okay. But yeah, it's... I guess it's just it, slow. Yeah, it just doesn't need to move that fast. Okay, moving to... Right. Uh, it can provide backup for uh, cluttered environments. Okay, very good. Uh, Multi-target... Okay, just reading the stream as we go as well. Uh, so we've got that. Then we've got the SPY 1B V, which is going to be our 3D radar. It's going to be the funny, funny, you know, giant array that's going to be on top of the superstructure. 324 kilometers range and amazingly 61 kilometers high. Now, why that needs to go 200,000 feet, I'm not sure. Maybe this is uh, also for missile interception. I'm not sure. Yeah. A 3D PESA. Air radar with IFF, non-cooperative target recognition, so the ability to IFF something that's not, you know, transponding. Uh, jet engine modulation, so something that can IFF uh, a coalition of aircraft by looking at their 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 blades front and back of their engines. Really interesting. Um, track wall scan, so this is this sends out the primary one, uh, primary radar track wall scan and a missile uplink. Lighter and more capable than the SB-1A adds moving a target indicator to remove non-moving clutter. So this is probably going to be a primary by the sounds of it. This is going to be yep. big daddy. Uh, and again, what a radar that is. It's not something you want to stand in front of that antenna. Um, beastie. Okay, very good. Uh, also, four times... Uh, S have I just skipped my note? Four times SPG-62. What's this? This is up to 300 
five kilometers range, 100,000 feet, continuous wave, terminal, right, continuous wave. So this is when you're guiding missiles, you'll use continuous wave radar. Terminal guidance for the SM-2 and ESSM. Uh, sorry, remind me, ESSM? Enhanced Sea Sparrow Missile. Mm-hmm. Uh, can be time shared between many missile volleys. So, let me get this right. When we're firing our SM-2s at an aeroplane or a series of aeroplanes, uh, we're going to be using our SBG-62 targeting radars to actually guide the missiles for the terminal phase of their uh, of their of their you know shoot uh, until it hits the target, right? Yep. And once it impacts, if there's more targets, it'll point towards the next one for the next salvo. Roger. SM-2 uses data link uh, for original uh, reading from the stream for the you know the main flight path, and then this radar continue away, continuous way for terminal guidance. Um, now, just note that SM-2s could also be used, I'm pretty sure, for surface-to-surface, uh, -surface, so you can shoot ships with them. Presumably, the SBG-2 wouldn't be useful for that because you're going to have over-the-horizon problems, but it's just something interesting that myself and another guy was talking about uh, how they guide over the horizon to a surface target, but I, I don't know, that's just what we've been talking about. Very good. Um, and as we know, these missiles can be shot out and attacked many targets at once for the reasons. I wonder if one, only one SBG can track only one target. So, like, you have to define an SBG for each target. I don't know that. I'm just guessing, but just interesting. I think so. I never thought to look at that, but I think it is, like, one... One SBG to one missile. Because there's no mention at of, one point. There's no mention of track while scan, and presumably you need track while scan if you're going to have more than one target per radar. But again, we don't really know. But let us know what you guys think. Okay, um, SBQ nine A up to thirty seven kilometers, two dimensional surface per multi sorry purpose surface search radar and fire control for the Mark eighty Mark eighty six. Is that the gun? Yes, uh, that's the uh, gun con gun fire control well, system. Gun it's a system that controls the gun. Right, so we can use this to surface search, and we can use it to fire the gun, um, which is obviously going to be radar guided. Uh, we've got a remote optical system, visual, which is obviously very common. Uh, slaved optical system for the Mark 86 gun comes with low light modes for night fighting. So you're going to have this. I mean, I, I always say it's a glorified video camera, um, and you can slave it to your radar. Uh, so you can see your target or help with IFF, can't you? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so or you can always just use it to scatter around what's going on outside from the inside the bowels of the ship, too. Yeah, roger. I mean, yeah, okay. Very good. Um, two times Mark 90, question mark, what's this? This is a fire control radar for... Oh, right, so these are... For the for the sea whizzes, the phalanx sea whizzes, uh, does not have IFF. That's one thing we've learned about sea whizz. It will happily <laughs> happily shoot anything, um, and hence the controllers down in you know the command center uh, have to be very careful about which mode they put this on because they can happily you know shoot your own tomcat or hornet. Um, it could consist of search radar and fine tuned tracker short range. So basically, the sea whizz is a self contained unit with its own radar, which is the Mark ninety, right? Yeah, you can just pretty much plop it down on anything. Roger. Now, my understanding is from just the, you know, the very small amount of reading that I've done about these is that you can integrate these sensors. So you can, in some cases, slave different weapons to different systems. It's, I think it's even possible to slave a phalanx to a different radar. Uh, let me know if you think I'm wrong there, but it's just the small things I've been reading about. Uh, I think you can feed data into it. Mm. I also know that the rolling airframe missile can work with the... Uh, the Mark 90 to hit targets too. I tell you what, there's a lot of programming that goes involved in all these systems and to make them work with each other, isn't there? And this is probably some old, probably some old tech in these old cruisers that haven't been modernised as well. Cool. I feel for the guy who has to do all their networking. Um, let's crack, let's crack on. We're on to red now. So anti-submarine. Yep. SQS-53 Bravo V2, up to 74 kilometers. It's an active passive sonar, so it's listening, but it can also ping. Is that the right thing to say? Yeah, send out an active wave, that'd be a ping. Uh, better target uh, association, passive performance, and multiple target tracking over A version. What does that mean, if any? Yeah, uh, 
The SQS 53A, that's what it's comparing oh. to. I got confused. And has some digital components added. Right. So do we know is this is this system gonna be housed in a kind of bell underneath the underneath the hull somewhere? Yeah, like if you look in DCS you'll see mm -hmm. the bulb in the bottom. Ah. That's the sonar dome. Mm. Right, okay, that makes sense. Uh right. Also ANSQR nineteen V one TAC TAS up to hundred and thirty kilometers. Passive, I love these things, passive towed array sonar can be strung about uh, half a mile from a ship just give us a quick kind of 30 second overview of what this is and why it does its thing uh what it is is it's effectively a, a string of uh passive microphones hooked onto a cable that you string off from the ship you can use it either to get a good signal away from your ship from all the the noisy engines and everything and if you're in an environment where the water from two different areas have different temperatures that forms a, a thermocline i think that's what it's called whereas uh sound will propagate differently you can use that to get a better picture mm -hmm. underneath that uh layer of warm water mm -hmm. or colder water roger and something not too dissimilar an esco lq 25 a nixie a uh, couple of kilometers, roughly, we think. Towed torpedo decoy connected with fiber optic cable. So, this is something we're going to tow behind the ship. Uh, it can simulate louder machinery noises for the target ship as magnetic countermeasures, better waveform info. It can also send active pings back to the torpedo, but louder. So, this is going to pretend to be our ship, and hopefully, the torpedo will hit that, uh, obviously. Right. Now we're getting to the really complex stuff, and this is where I start to get lost. Uh, electronic Warfare, SLQ-32 AV-3, Jammer range unknown. Um, ESM, sorry, what's that? Electronic Support Measure. A system can provide radar warning receivers, so we can listen for other radars, ships, planes, whatever. Receives not only radar signals used on most aircraft and missiles, but also... Uh, uh, targeting and surveillance radars for even major ships. V3 can jam missile uh, radio frequency bands. Cool. So that's probably... Is that a whole array of antennas, or is that just one antenna, or don't we know? Uh, this is this system is like a clump of radars mm. into, into like one mount. Usually that's what you see, isn't it? You On the side of a superstructure, you see just a bunch of bulbs and stuff that is the EW, and that's all you know about it. Just, it's there, okay. Uh, Mark 36 Mod 2 SR Bok Decoy Launching System. Uh, the Mark 36 Launching System becomes the system when Nolka components are installed, capable of uh, consisting only Nolka launches or could be installed alongside the six tube oh, launches of Mark 36. I made a mistake there. That's supposed to be, uh, that's supposed to be like uh, six tubes, three at... Yeah, this is the system before Nolka. I put the wrong description in there. Roger. So what we're talking about here is the physical tubes that will launch countermeasures out. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. And then what we've got here under that is a is all the sub variants and the sub munitions it can fire. Okay. So what we're going to have is four. To, so there are there four units with six barrels each. Yep. Okay, Mark 137 Mod 2, 40 per pair uh, of launchers. Range varies on the type of cartridge used. Launch for the SR Bokken equivalent decoy is 130mm mortar decoy launchers, three tubes to 45 degrees, three tubes to 60 degrees. Type of ammo that we can use in them. Uh, no, not all times I've found. So, yeah, so, I mean, take it with a pinch of salt. Different ships over different periods would have different versions of these and different types of these but okay generally speaking mark 182 sr bok chaff split into two stages uh macro cassettes for stage one and plastic wrap packages for stage two has two mod versions so this is for uh is this for blocking radar guided missiles or is it what is this actually for this chaff uh, uh that one i believe is to act as I can't remember if it's distraction or seduction. Where distraction just throws out a giant mm. cloud that you can't see through. And seduction is like what you have on the fighter jets that you're mm. trying to get the missile mm. to go to that cloud. So if you're if you're going along the Strait of Hormuz and uh, what are those nasty things that the Chinese made that fire from silkworms. the silkworms? Silkworms. Uh, if silkworms sticks, uh, if they they fire at you, they're going to be radar guided. 
Um, and you're going to pump a lot of this out, and hopefully they're going to either be seduced by the chaff and go for the chaff and just not blow up, or um, then just going to be distracted and just lose their target or whatever. Um, 1986, is that 1986, the next one? Yep. Uh, so from the beginning, we've got the 214 CNAT, the distraction, and uh, CNAT uh, seduction. Excuse me. Uh, we've got a Mark 186 torch. Standard flare decoy, uh, lights upon contact with water. So does, okay. Uh, mod 2 improves flame, mod 3 is an advanced flare decoy. This is, uh, what is this? To stop hostiles getting a infrared lock and or launching infrared guided missiles at you? Yeah, uh, there are some uh, IR guided uh, mm -hmm. anti-ship yeah. missiles. They're not as common. Well, and the, uh, let's have a little thing. Just in DCS, we've got... The IR guided AGM 65. Oh, my brain's going now. Getting so old. I can't remember. One of the variants, F, I think. And that's an IR guided anti ship missile. You know, it's going to look for the heat of the boat and, and go for it. So, yeah, exactly. Um, we've got the two, EX 252. Moldy stage IF flare in order to walk off uh, to an IR seeker. Starts with high intensity flares, then goes to long lasting flares. So that's a multi stage that's going to try and literally move the seeker head's interest away from the ship, right? Yep. Uh, Mark 245 Giant deploys five sub munitions, releasing warm smoke, glowing particles, and gas radiation. Um, each can walk off IR seekers, so the same kind of thing, but a different variant, if you like, different method. Super Chaff Star produces a large chaff cloud, creating a radar cross section of 10 kilometers squared from 8 to 18 gigahertz up to 20 kilometers squared for spot frequency so that's a fancy chaff i guess super gemini combo of ir and chaff 30 second flare and chaff around 800 no eight kilometers square radar cross section i wonder how big a ship cross section is i mean it's not eight kilometers squared i know that uh, probably a fraction of a kilometer i'm guessing I'd have to look that up. Modular. Uh, 81. 81. What are these doing back in 81? It's probably because these have been copied from a different ship, I imagine, different hull, um, or a different vessel. Uh, Super Hiram yeah. 3. Spa buoy. I think that's how you say it. Bright flare creates 2.5 M. What's M? Flame. Uh, 2.5 2. meter flame, so. Oh, well, meter flame that replicates a large ship heat signature. Okay. Swar, SWO IR, six submunitions releasing IR clouds, each one bigger than the last. 15 second burn time. Is that what's that for? Walk off. Uh, that's a yeah. That's another IR thing. Although concerned the fact that it generates this giant cloud, it will also distract from anything that you're trying to guide optically. Roger. Slad. <laughs> Roger. Slad. Acoustic torpedo decoy. First sends a jamming signal, then sends out simulated ship noise. Very good. And lead. Acoustic torpedo decoy spreads decoys in a pattern. Anything on the Mark 36 before we move on? Uh, nothing else, really, other than the Mark 40. The 36 is like the control system itself. Roger, launch system, roger. Okay, next we've got, um, what does minus 98 mean? Is that before 98? That means that that was uninstalled in 1998. This is when it gets upgraded right. to the 53. So that was uninstalled in 98. Added in 98 was the Mark 53 decoy launcher system. Mark 36 launching house system becomes this system when Nulka components are installed, capable of consisting only... So this is when it was the Nulka was added, right? Yep. And your Nulka launchers can be alongside the... Okay, fine. So it's an upgraded system. Uh, with ammunition... Uh, I'm trying to get this right. Four times two. Mark one, three, six, mod ten, eight total. So, what is this? Four times two tubes. Yep. So it's gone to less. Presumably, they're better countermeasures or something. Well, it's more like these are with the uh, six tubes. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, I got. Oh, I got you. Launcher for the Nalka seduction decoy. This decoy is a rocket launch and uses the rocket to hover in place. Wowzer while transmitting a signal that mimics the radar signature of the ship launching it. How clever. Isn't that clever? Yeah, this thing's real cool. It was a uh, collab project between the US and Australia, if I recall, right? Right. So, vampire, vampire. Uh, we've got um, uh, silkworms in the air. 
or you know, coming towards us, send up the Nulka seduction decoy. It's going to go up. What, what does it hang in a hang on a parachute or something? It sort of has a. Actually, I don't think it's a parachute. I think it just sits there with a the rocket motor and it just kind of keeps it in place. Yeah, and the the poor little um, the poor little vampire is going to go. What should I go for? What should I go for? What should I go for? Let's go for this one. Hits the decoy. Ship is more or less okay with maybe a little little shrapnel damage. Very good. Six times six choose one three seven mod four forty uh, ammo read above for ammo types. Is that for the uh, is that the ammo types above the the multiple types? Yep. Yeah, it is isn't yeah, six choose. Effectively, they uh, added on two more yeah. of the Thorbok launchers. Very good. And finally, W four times SOQ forty nine passive floating passive radar reflector that looks like a ship to a radar drop via rails. D well F two is improved version with larger ECS DLF used fixed launcher tubes known to UK as rubber ducks can act as a seduction decoy. Um, I get the idea of it, but what does it look like to the layman? What is this? Is this a thing that's sitting on the sea or? Yep. Uh... Imagine like a giant inflatable twenty-sided dice. That's pretty oh, much what it looks like. How clever! In in the air, we have things like talds. Uh, we used to you know, different things now that would, would would pretend to be an aeroplane. So this big eight-sided cube or uh, 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 twenty-sided twenty-sided dice D twenty is sitting there pretending to be a ship. Yep, yeah, it can hang around for about half an hour, I recall, and it's got like a little floating anchor, so it's l roughly stay where you drop it roger and assuming if, if it's over the um you know over the earth's curvature you can't see it with your visual sensors then you're going to think it's a ship apart from the fact that yeah. it's not moving yeah and also if they launch it early enough you go to try to find it now you got two signals you don't even know which one's the right one mm. interesting right very good Right, we're going to move on to communication, satcoms and comms. So, uh, purple, two times OE, I'm not going to read that out, but that's the ultra-high-frequency satellite comms. Correct. I'm going to establish a connection with the UHF follow-on sat constellation for users such as Dharma, Voice, and Data Comms. Very good. Um, I always wonder if there's any black spots in the sat systems. Did you ever hear of black spots in the sat systems where you couldn't hook up to a satellite? I don't think the most of the systems the US have access to has any real um blind spots in it. Roger. Um very good. Um USC thirty eight, e extremely high frequency satellite used to connect to Millstar um compatible satellite for secure jam resistant low probability of intercept comms. Fine. Oh, I'm going to struggle with this one. In Inmarsat. I haven't heard of that one. What's Inmarsat? Inmarsat's like a company, um, an international marine satellite. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, system that you can use for voice comms and data. There's civilian versions too, and this was roughly what one of the things the Navy used to get their feet wet on using uh, satellite communications much more. Roger. Okay, so introduced in '94, we had this guy. Introduced in '98, we had this guy here. Designed to send voice, video, and data. Can connect both civilian and military based on constellations, high-speed data connections. Very good. Uh, he was taken away on 2002. He was added on 2002. Two times CTEL. Uh, used a uses a civilian-based antenna to access both civilian and some military networks. Taken away on 2008 was ba, 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 that one there. Added on 2008 was that there. Modified modification uh, provides upgrades to uh, system and reduced radar cross section. Uh, high frequency. High frequency radio systems capable of voice and data using both whip and fan wire antennas. Are these ship to ship high frequency or are they. What do you, you could use it to communicate the shore to get some. So, um, if you use it right, you can use it for a long haul. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is this is all very complicated. The, my, if I wanted to speak to someone about this, my dad, you know, did this for a living for um, for decades, and he could, you know, tell me the different frequencies and how he could bounce them, um, how far you could bounce them around the world and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, very high frequency and ultra high frequency point to point here, uh, gaming uh, used for ultra high frequency line of sight. Ah, uh, right surface. 
voice and data communications. So this is what you're going to bounce to ships, yeah? Yep, mostly. You can use it to talk with planes too. Roger, yeah, absolutely. SSR1 uh, here, antennas designed to receive teletype communications from satellites. Okay. Yep. Uh, we've got the urn. Uh, we're on to green here. You are in 25, 300 miles miles max. Uh, this is the TACAN tactical air navigation for helicopters. It allows uh, helicopters to find the ship. Uh, systems. So we've got the Aegis Mark 7 Baseline Force CCS. So it's going to get very complex now. Combat control system connecting all sensors, and this is the idea of kind of Aegis, wasn't it? That you 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 connect all your sensors together into one kind of giant thinking machine and make the might make it a smart ship and uh, weapons and consoles together into a, in control and decision computer and weapons control system for quick reactions uh, uh, because before this you were you know each weapon and each radar was controlled by essentially you know a guy in a room and and nothing was linked together and everything's linked together now and quick reactions can now happen by a computer it's much quicker than man can track 128 plus targets meant for uh, uh, destroyers and some uh, cruisers use cruiser computers with programs intended for flight one uh, destroyers. Anything to add to that before we move on to the details? Yeah, to clarify, this was meant for the early, early Burks, but when they were building some of these later Tycos, what they did was they just took that baseline and put it into them. Right, so, and the Arli Burke was the um, was the modern Aegis destroyer? Yeah. Roger. So, um, SQQ89V3, anti Submarine? Yep. Warfare. Combat system capable of combining data from multiple sources. Exists with systems such as the analog. Lots of names there. And LAMPS, which is anti submarine processor torpedoes. Uh, uh, when you say CNC, a command and control. Yep. And more. Okay. Added in 1988. The Aegis Mark 7 Baseline 5 CCS. Adds JTIDs. Remind JTIDs? Uh, here. Joint tactical. It's a type of data uh, link, is what I remember. Yeah. A type of data it, link. Yeah. This is more of like a control system for it. Like you'll get different things that hook into JTIDs, and this kind of helps uh, like uh, figure everything out. Right. So this is 1988. So we've got JTIDs integrating with Link 16 data link, which is going to be used by aeroplanes as well. Uh, the SM2 system for the standard missile 2 system. Uh, CNC, pro CNC processor, combat direction finding, tactical data exchange information system. Uh, this guy here, as part of the baseline, was implemented in three phases. It may consist of more systems. Okay. Baseline 5, that was. 2011, Aegis Mark 7 Baseline 6 added. Baseline 6 consists of CEC. What's that? Uh, that is the... Uh, oh, shoot. Combined... Engagement capability. It's not the exact thing for it, but that's when you've got a data link that you can work with other ships and fire their missiles at targets you're tracking and such. Roger, I've got fiber optics, I'm guessing for speed, but I don't really know. Advanced Tomahawk control systems. We've got JMCIS, we've got ESSM. Any idea on JMCIS? Fire control system upgrades, adds more simulation trainers, some variants also have BMD. Lots of acronyms have been fired at us now. Uh, so that's 2011 um, added. Uh, also, cooperative engagement capabilities. Oh, cooperative engagement capability, CEC, USG2. System and data links, members of the battle group to share IFF and sensor data for the fire control can allow units in that network to use data from other ships to fire or even guide other ships' missiles and more. Uh, USG2 is surface version. Uh, the air version is USG3. Very good. So I can fire my SM2 over the horizon and a frigate over there can guide it for me, right? A yeah, frigate destroyer, um, even the... Some AWACS, like I believe mm -hmm. the E2D mm -hmm. modified and E2Ds have that. Yep, cool. Uh, data links. I'm not sure if we can still use all these, but it'd be interesting if we can. Uh, we've got 4A, so I think a Tomcats would have used that, the old Tomcats, uh, Tadal C, data link. 
uh, between air and surface units for ATC, auto carrier land, ACLS, air intercept, strike vectoring, and setting canes for your alignment. Link seven, title A, uh, secure date link for US Navy oh, ships. That's, uh, that's link 11. What did I say? I used that seven. Yep, don't know where that came from. Link 11, um, secure data link for US Navy ships and some aircraft for near real-time tactical picture. One unit is net controller. Others are picket sharing the, their data. Um, then net controller shares the overall picture. Uses high frequency, ultra high frequency, and SATCOM. Link 14, teleprinted data link designed to receive link 11 messages not commonly used. And link 16, which as far as I'm aware is still used today, tabled J, 1998 onwards. Secure jam resistant TDMA data link for joint operations can be sent over line of sight, SATCOM, or over long haul protocols such as TCIP IP intended to replace Link 4A. Very good. Which moves us on to the mighty array of weapons that this thing carries. Anything before we start that? This was a nightmare to compile. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt. Bearing in mind that this changes a lot over the years, so well done for doing this anyway. Right, let's blast off. Um, as best we can. Mark 41 mod, uh, zero vertical launch system, one times 61, one times 61, so 121, 22 tubes, if you want to call them that. Variable payload. Uh, it's the hot vertical launch system capable of accepting many types of missiles containing canisters. Eight cells are grouped within one exhaust hatch. Didn't know that. Uh, came with one crane per launcher, later sealed off. What does it mean, came with one, one crane per launcher, later sealed off? Um... Originally, they designed these to be able to be loaded at sea, mm -hmm. but they're, it was determined to be too dangerous. Like, imagine having a helicopter with mm -hmm. a giant cell floating over mm -hmm. the ship. Just, you know, they didn't like it. <laughs> okay. Right. And all the weapons they can carry, and there are a lot. So, RIM-66, standard missile 2, medium range, this 2 MR, about 90 nautical miles, so, you know, uh, long way. Um, it's got a big old warhead at 250 pounds. That's the same as a Mark 82 bomb, I think. That's a very big, high explosive frag. SAM missile can target ships. Autopilot is designed to fly most efficient path to target. Mid course uses INS and SP1 command guidance. And then the terminal uses the SBG 62s, semi active radar homing, like we looked at earlier. Block 2, <clears throat> excuse me, features new rocket engine for near nearly twice the range, upgraded frag warhead, and improved ECM protection uh, over the Block 1s. Okay, what are these little blue things below? Uh, if you click those, those are like little mini links to a uh, side thing I put oh. that discusses those mm -hmm. in general. We are getting serious, aren't we? Very good. <clears throat> Next, RIM-66 H125, standard missile 2, medium range Block 3, added in 1996. Block 3A, add in 2011, Block 3B, SM2, MR, 90 miles. I thought it was actually more than 90, but maybe that's just me getting it wrong. Um, 250 pound warhead. Uh, what does HE directed frag mean? Never heard of a directed frag. It defeats um, the terms of frag, doesn't it? I sort of explained it a little bit, but how it works is, is that this one's got like a special way where it'll direct... The missile will direct like the warhead towards the target, and it'll just shoot it in a specific area rather than just spreading it in a general direction. Okay. Uh, Sam missile can target ships. Um, autopilot flies most efficient path to target. Mid course uses INS SB1 Colos guidance terminal with the SBG62 semi active radar homing block three. Better fuse against low targets. 3A adds new detector rolls into target, detector rules, you know what that is, but, and uses directed frag for sea skimmers. Right, so this is all to do with, the, especially with directed frag, for taking out seas, probably sea skimming missiles. Um, missing the comma in there. Roger. Uh, 3B, and oh, adds an IR seeker uh, on terminal, compares IR, and uses the best signal. So 3B, I didn't know this, has an IR seeker additionally, so it can, if it decides the IR signal is better, it will use that. If it determines the, you know, fox the the radar signal is better, it will use that. Hmm, how interesting! I guess that's the modern way of doing it, isn't it? I see a lot of yeah. Problems with that on now. it's yeah, it's more meant for like uh, if you get like low targets to the water, it could use the AR sensor. I wonder what happens if you're in terminal and you lose 
the radar track because, for instance, the uh, aeroplane notches the radar, which is you know, obviously a real thing, if it then can switch to IR and keep the lock, wouldn't that be interesting? That would make these, un- yeah. not- make these unnotchable missiles, basically, which is, excuse me, incredibly dangerous from the aircraft. Uh, added, 1998, RIM 156A, SM2ER, Block 4, Standard Missile to Extended Range, 130 nautical miles with a smaller warhead, HE uh, directed frag, and we don't think because it's a smaller warhead it's any less dangerous, it probably is, is more accurate and therefore it le- probably needs a less uh, warhead, RIM 62M2 with booster stage, designed to give Aegis equipped ships with a long range option, so you fire this way over the horizon, maybe someone else will guide it for you, can be launched to dispatch in atmosphere, atmosphere ballistic missiles or very fast targets. A block for a was planned but didn't happen is being phased out for the sm6 missiles added 2011 we think four times rim 162 enhanced sea sparrow missiles essm 27 plus range actual max is classified sounds about right from what we know i guess uh uh, for a 90 pound warhead heavily redesigned rim 7 so this came from the the aim 7 sparrow yeah, what happened was the Navy was trying to design a point defense uh, missile, but that pro- that project failed, so they uh, worked with the Air Force to use the work on the Sea Sparrow. Roger, come up with Aegis, so, okay. Enhancements include larger booster for better acceleration, computer and thrust vectoring. Didn't know that for 50 G turns. Jeez, so you're not going to be out maneuvering this puppy. Uh, although note that will only be on the burn stage for 50 G turns to counter oh counter maneuvering ASM. So what they would find is that the latest RB15 or whatever could dodge the missiles, right? Because those old um, SM2s weren't very, well, and so they added thrust vectoring, so you can no longer dodge around them. Yeah, well the big story behind this one was that they're trying to design a uh, active version of the. Of the Sparrow, but the Air Force dropped out of the Sparrow program for their Ad- AMRAM. Mm-hmm. So, um, the company that was making the uh, ESSMs, they're like, "Hey, you know, we could rebuild this missile into something else." And this is the beast they came up with. Mm-hmm. Right, very good. Um, going back in time, BGM one hundred nine B Tomahawk anti sh- Tomahawk anti ship missile. Wow, I didn't know such thing existed. Okay. I thought the tomahawk was always get land. Two hundred and forty because it's a you know it's gonna be a jet powered missile. Uh, two hundred and forty miles. One thousand pound HE blast frag, because it's a mark in terms of actual uh, warhead, that's a mark eighty four, two thousand pound bomb. I think it would be the thousand pound bomb version. No, a thousand pound bomb only has only has five hundred pound of actual uh, oh yeah, that's right. So, they discontinued so. the thousand pound version. I forgot about that. Crews built for anti ship uh, use. Uh, cr- yeah, uh, use uh, uses a similar active radar homing system as the Harpoon. So it's got its. So it, this one's got its own radar on. Okay, yep. it's fired in the direction of where a target is expected to be, and uses a similar navigation active radar homing system as the Harpoon. It can engage in sea skimming mode once locked on, and is known to be. Agile and attack from multiple angles. So I'm just trying to think why this exists. What was wrong with the harpoon? Is it because this can go much, much further? You can just fire yeah. roughly where you think a carrier group is and say, yeah, they're probably over there. Put those coordinates in and it will work it work it out itself and go all that way. Because I think a harpoon yep. is like uh, 70 or 80 miles or something from memory. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit further down. That's not mm-hmm. right. And then we've got BGM 109C T LAM Tomahawk Land Attack Missile Conventional Block 2 to A. 700 miles. I wonder why it can go so much further than that one. I guess it's just better. 700 miles, it's a long way. It's almost cheating, I'd say. Again, £1,000 high, uh, high explosive frag. Warhead cruise missile designed for hard, hardened targets such as airfields or naval bases. Uses inertial navigation system TURCOM. Dismac. What? Turcom and Dismac. Do we know any idea what this is? Satellite. It must be satellite, mustn't it? Uh, the Turcom is... What it does is uh, it's called uh, terrain... Uh, oh, shoot. Contouring. Uh, basically what it does is it looks at the features underneath it to figure out oh. where it is. 
Is that using so it's own got its own sort of radar sensor on? Yeah, it's like it's like using like a radar altimeter to get a picture of the whole area. And then DS Mac uses pictures and it takes pictures under it to help figure out where it's at. Roger, yeah, and this is absolutely a thing. So if you were gonna go and fly these for instance MI eight, uh possibly even the vegan, but definitely the MI eight and DTS, um it has a downwards point in Doppler. Uh, that maps the terrain as you fly across it and because it remembers where that terrain's moved that's how it navigates it's an amazing piece of technology to be honest pretty terrible from what i remember but it you know it can it can see where the bushes and stuff are moving and therefore it can track where it thinks it's been uh, this is you know pre gps obviously um and, and, and really interesting um actually using it in dcs unless you're a master which i'm not it's bloody impossible to use but it's an interesting piece of tech anyway Block two only targets from the side. Block three, two A adds uh, two more free flight decimated terminal paths. So pop up or dive and detonation over target it needs eighty hours mission planning time. What does that actually mean? It needs eighty hours um, mission planning time. Basically, if you want to fire a missile with these earlier versions, mm -hmm. you need to spend eighty hours. Uploading data. all the data right. into the missile. Because it has to understand that. Here's the thing: if it's gonna know the land that it's crossed over it has to know you know what land to expect and so on so i don't you know i don't know exactly how it works but anyway uh we've got the d version which i think is what we get in dcs i think yep. uh yeah turcom is terrain on tour matching roger uh, that big oz there the copy thank you mr oz as ever uh the delta version um dispenser uh 700 miles 100 uh 166 blu 97 bombers so this is uh, what's the word? Cluster. Uh, cluster. Same kind of thing, but cluster. Uh, warhead. Um, shape charge. Frag and incendiary. Christmas are meant for soft targets like aircraft and air defences. Uses the same uh, uh, guidance systems, which I didn't know about. It has 22 canisters, 7 bomblets, 2 canisters, 6 bomblets. Can use partial bomblets to allow for multiple attacks on one mission. Wow. Uh, can fly in multiple patterns. 8 hours mission blue. Uh, I'd love to know is anyone if anyone can let me know the puck size of those the bomblet size I'd love to know that for a BLU 97 um I've forgotten the puck size but that's interesting uh very good uh, add in 93 the uh, C model I think we've already been over so what's different ah this is going to be a mark block 3 these are old these tomahawks are old aren't they I wonder when the A model will come out if anyone can find that uh that was 60s or 70s, I oh. believe, and the early versions, I believe, were nuclear. Wowza. Yeah, right. So that's where the Tomahawk came from. What a beast. So this Block 3 model, all the way back in 1993, it just seems such a long time ago now, 900 nautical miles range, 740 pound fuse, high explosive blast frag. Uh, cruise missile designed hardened targets such as Air Force bases, Block 3 jam resistant GPS. DS Mac upgrade a more efficient engine program time of one hour, so not 80 hours uplink, but one hour. Can loiter in an area uh, for time on target. How interesting! So it can spin around in a circle or whatever until it needs to hit and be given new GPS targets using TTWCS tactical tomahawk weapons control system. Right, so you can change target halfway on its course, and that's only in 1993. Amazing how complex this stuff is at such an early age remember what computers were like in 93 they were horrendously bad uh oz says blu 93 length stored uh we've got 17 centimeters deployed and 22 so that's what's that, half a foot pucks something like that still gonna ruin your day right 2006 the echo version of the 109 tactical tomahawk land attack missile uh, block four, a smaller warhead again, um, 900 kilometers. Uh, 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 cruise missile designed for hardened targets, upgrades, anti jam, and UHF sat uplink to allow redirection to 15 pre planned targets or new ones mid flight. Can also loiter and transmit a video signal back to the controller. Interesting. Uh, designed to be cheaper than the TLAM CD, uses GPS. Uh, so we're GPS was invented by now. Oh, well, actually, it was GPS was late eighties. I'm surprised they didn't all use yeah, GPS. Yeah, the 
And um, this one's basically designed to work through if someone's trying to jam a GPS signal, which is easier than it sounds. Right, absolutely. I mean, GPS is, I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. Right, um, move on to, we're done with our Tomahawks. So moving on to something else, red. Remind me what red is? Submarine. Anti-submarine. There we go. Run 139A, uh, vertical launch anti-sub rocket. And you can go out to about 12 miles, Mark 46 or 54 lightweight torpedo, a Rusrock. Was designed to be compatible with the Mark 41 uh, VLS. Effectively, it's a rocket launch torpedo that flies to a designated point uh, via INS and drops into the water as a torpedo to locate the target from there. Very impressive um, technology back there. Um, sub variants A, B, C. Uh, we've got it here. I'm just looking for the interest of them. They're all a hundred pound warhead. Hundred pound warhead. That's incredibly small for a for a torpedo, isn't it? When you're usually well, talking about thousands. Yeah. Due to the way that things work underwater with the physics and mm -hmm. such, when it explodes, it creates a vacuum. So it's like it's not just the it's not just the impact of the mm -hmm. explosion, but mm -hmm. then it's the ripping of it from the vacuum because you got to fill it in with something. Interesting. Okay. Um, so 100 pound were well, torpedo built to engage high performance subs. The since it's upgraded since it's introduced in 1968. Wow. Okay. And. Yep, that's Old but reliable. Unbelievable. A NATO standard, active passive homing at 1.2 kilometers. Uh, not as good in shallow water. Upgrades uh, torpedo allows operation in water as shallow as 120 feet and possibly go deeper than older versions. Do we know why sonar is less good in low water? Are you getting just too many, too much background clutter from the ping? Or yeah, because like in open water, you don't get a whole lot of returns. But if you're out in, in out at shore, you might have different ships nearby. You might have all this, all these features underwater mm. bouncing back at. So it mm. gets very confusing. Uh, then we got the next one, which is new torpedo combining parts of the previous meant to operate effectively in shallow and deep water, uh, uh, while being cheaper than the Mark Fifty uses active sonar and passive radar. So I wonder if it's all about the the process, like a radar, the processing out of the reflections. Uh, and the clutter. Yeah, that's definitely a part of it. Mm. Uh, which you can do, obviously, with computers on board. Mark 141 launcher varies on missile la launcher for the art. Ah, so this is probably going to be mid midships, usually, we find. Um, now, this one's going to be in the aft portion, actually. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is it traditional uh, above-deck launcher that you see? Yep. Okay, launch for Harpoon. I wonder why they're not coming out of the VLS. Launch for Harpoon missile added year indicates the missile release date, not equipping date. So... Harpoons, and we've got the two variants of the Block 1C up to 80 miles with half, uh, with sorry, 500 pound warhead and delayed impact fuse for penetration and damage. Originally intended to attack surface surface subs, didn't know that. Didn't know that. Yeah, that's the reason why the originals have the up down thing, so it's going down into the yeah. submarine. How interesting. The missile became a go to for NATO anti ship use. It uses INS with its own terminal active ra radar. Uh, radio of terminal guidance block 1c can either pop up or see skim uh target and brings increased ranges uh, and better ecm and then we've got the lima block 2 same range same uh warhead uses jdam and slam er parts let me figure this out so that's gps ins parts to uh upgrade the harpoon such as ins gps comes with the ecm upgrades can over the horizon with helicopters and also uh, re-attack capability can also uh, wow we don't have re-attack capability in DTS I wonder if we'll get that can also in theory attack land targets with known positions and also work in literal areas um, interesting that's the LGM 84L version we've got the we've got the AGM 84D so we've got that one there but the air launch version is otherwise pretty much going to be the same so 2009 this was added okay so that's before the one that we've got how interesting very clever missiles. Moving on to uh, yellow, orange. What's orange? Uh, these are guns. Guns. Everyone now. Everyone likes guns. So we start off with two times, or no, don't me. Yeah, yeah, two times one. So two barrels of Mark forty-five. No, uh, two guns of one barrel each. Roger. Yeah, my bad. Um, a five-inch. Uh, what does that mean? One hundred and twenty-five millimeters ish. 
Yep, uh, this is going to be the uh, the two main guns. Yeah, um, what does 680 mean? 680 rounds ready to go? Uh, 680 per magazine. Per Never, magazine, right. roger. Um, we don't know the range for some reason, because it depends. Uh, varies on shell used. Lightweight gun mod 1 adds electric fuse setter. Comes with 20 round auto loader. Can choose different rounds. Goes to manual load. An empty uh, 20 RPM max, uh, 16 RPM with fused rounds. Very good. Notes: this is not compared to the list of ammo types. So we can have Mark 88 high explosive CVT. What's that? Uh, combined variable time. Uh, these are like their descendants are from the World War II shells that's mm -hmm. designed to use a uh, radar to detect what's close to it. This one will yeah. use a timer to. Turn it on. That's in case of things like if you're in like a rainstorm or if there's some magnetic interference going on. You would use this to turn on the radar seeker right before it's supposed to hit. Who's deciding which bullets to load? Or is Aegis deciding that or does anyone know? Yeah, it, it can be remotely controlled. It's like it's almost like a twenty round revolver is like how it was described to me. Roger. I'll just be told that it's five the bullet is five inches wide and 54 calibers long. I still haven't worked out what 54 calibers means, or calibers, but I'm going to do one day. I if I recall it, I think a caliber is how much longer it is compared to the shell. So this is like 54 times longer than the shell is uh, in diameter. Okay. Doesn't sound right at all to me. That sounds like an incredibly long shell, but okay. Um, well, this is the barrel we're talking about. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Right, I'm there now. High explosive shell with combo time and radio fuse. Okay, we talked about that. Uh, Mark 80 high explosive PD, which is point detonating fuse. Uh, all about 60 to 70 pounds. You wouldn't want, really want that landing on you. Okay, fine. Uh, we've got an illum. So that's an illumination round used in a mechanical time fuse. So back in the day, back in the good old days, you'd call that star shell, wouldn't you? Illuminator? Yep. Uh, also, Willie Pete, if you know that one. Roger. Uh, Mark one one six uh, HEVT. That's a variable time radio proxy fuse. Now, what's the difference between that and the CVT com combo timed? This one doesn't have the uh, the timer in it. This one's basically you just fire it and it's uh, seekers ready to go okay. or the the radar fuse. I mean. Roger, we've got another HECVT now, um, which is different because it's, I guess, just more modern for whatever reason. But a Mark 156 HEIR. Wow, this exists. Yep, uh, IR fuse. Um, so it's a high explosive shell with IR sensor fuse. Now I'm wondering why on earth would you need that? Maybe for an aeroplane? Uh, uh, yeah, these are designed for um, anti ship cruise missiles. Anti-ship cruise missiles. Right. How interesting. Very good. Very good. Um, we've also got six times uh, um, M2 Browning machine guns to be fired presumably by humans. Uh, uh, that's how what it fires. Mounted heavy machine gun for small boat and pier defense uh, with ammo types. Uh, okay. What have we got here? Uh, in 2008... Sorry. In 2008, took two of them away and added uh, Bushmasters 25 Mike uh, by 67 calibers, which means the length of the barrel based on the diameter of the bullet. Interesting. Uh, can go that far. Now, the uh, yeah, electrically operated guns, you're not going to have a guy holding this. Uh, different types of rounds we've got there, which I'm learning about at the moment, actually. High explosive incendiary, high explosive incendiary tracer, semi iron piercing high explosive incendiary with tracer. Don't know F pads. Don't know A pads. Uh, um, yeah, the uh, oh, the F pads is a frangible armor piercing. This is more of if you're trying to shoot something, but you got people nearby. You don't want the rounds uh, bouncing off or reflect or. Uh, right. Shoot. Yeah, I get this, it. This basically just splits when it hits the target. Shrapnel control, that kind of thing, or okay. Yeah, like ricochet control. Ricochet. Right, okay. Uh, very good, guys. 25mm uh, electronically operated gun comes with an electro optical sight, so it's controlled by a guy in the hull somewhere. Ship roll compensation and improved interface and ammo loading. Fire up to 180 RPM. So it's like something like that. It can also be equipped with a coaxial uh, machine gun for close in. Two times six. Mark 15 block one phalanx. 
Wow, six of them. Yikes. Um, tungsten armor piercing, discarding sabo rounds. Yep. Um, Self-contained seawears using a 20 mil Vulcan cannon. Pneumatic barrels, 4,500 RPM. That sounds like... Uh, more ammo, better processing, uh, improved elevation. Has auto mode, recommended manual modes off. So yeah, the various modes I found interesting to read about. In 2008, two... Sorry, it's not six of them. It's two times six barrels. Two times six barrels, right. In 2008, two times six barrels Mark One were removed. 2008, two times six barrels Mark One Block One Bs were added. Uh, the difference being self-contained units uh, looks exactly the same. Um, oh, okay, I'll just read through it. Uh, improvements include new gun barrels, cartridges, and an IR sensor for better interception and for surface use. Has same mode as Block One. And again, no IFF. Red back to anti-submarine. Um, so these are the uh, these are the big ones. These are the foot uh, 12, 13 inch torpedoes, aren't they? Yeah. Are these, these ones are actually the lightweight ones. Usually they the are, heavy yeah. ones are reserved for the subs. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, gotcha. Now, these are these midships or are these hull launched, do you know? Uh, these are inside the hull. I'll, I'll, I got a colored where the uh, launchers right, are hiding so out behind the door. Right, so these are, yeah. Uh, we've got two times three sets of tubes. Uh, uh, torpedoes tubes designed for use on the uh, DDG-51. Whether it was DDG-51, is that the? Oh, I forgot to correct that. It should be CG-40, uh, or 49. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Whether it's using air pressure tubes operated remotely, can fire a variety of lightweight torpedoes. Uh, yeah, so we've got lightweight torpedoes here with various uh, types here. A lightweight torpedo. We've got. Generally speaking, maximum of 11 kilometers, depths up to 1,200 to 2,000 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, all moving about 40 knots by the looks of it, so you're going to catch any submarine. Uh, warheads, again, relatively small, but okay. Uh, 100 pounds for all of them. Uh, we've got speedo built to high, uh, high performance subs, extensive upgrades since it was introduced in 1968 and is a NATO standard active homing at 1.2, so it's, it's similar to what we saw before, if not the same. Torpedo built to uh, engage high performance subs, upgrades includes to allow for shallow environments. Yeah, uh, so we've been through this before, haven't we? Uh, shallow environments, better EECM and ground collision preset option. Designed for fast diving subs such as Alphas, based on the intended to replace the Mark 46, but the new engine was expensive. Active homing, 2.4 kilometers, and passive mode. Block one helps with shallow water. New torpedo combining parts from the previous. Um, uh, yeah, we looked at that before. Anything to add on the weapons before we move to the aircraft? Yeah, about the uh, Mark 50, it, like those, some of those subs, like the Alphas and the Papas, they go extremely fast. They're I think their top speed's like 41 and 43 knots underwater, so they had to divine, design the 50 to be able to not only chase them down for speed, but they can also dive really deep. So this is designed to go and chase them down to the depths of the ocean, too. Roger. If you were in a frigate, I know these are anti-submarine missiles, but if you fire a uh, service vessel, if you are in a frigate, you could turn away and outrun these or maintain the distance, couldn't you? Um... I recently read. Uh, I recently read Castles of Steel, which I recommend to anyone. I mean, this is different. This is World War One, so this is you know, hundred years ago, pretty much. But I remember the frigates were so confident in their um, torpedo dodging ability, they'd turn around and run away, and your delta would be like three knots. So this thing would just slowly home in at three knots and just burn its burn its fuel down. But anyway, found it interesting. Let's move on to aircraft. I'll stop babbling. One helicopter hangar holding two helicopters. So physically, you get two helicopters per cruiser, yeah? Yep. Uh, Black Hawk variants, SH-60B and the MH-60R. The SH-60B Seahawk, originally designed for anti-submarine and surface warfare, built with a LAMPS-3 anti-submarine system to share data back to the mothership, can take on roles such as transport... Oh, here we go. Vert... Rep. Forgotten. Vertical... Uh, vertical replenishment. Right. Is as it says in the tin, search and rescue, recon and more. For anti-submarine warfare, it comes equipped with a dipping sonar system, sonar buoy, uh, launcher magnetic anomaly systems to detect submarines. It also has forward-looking infrared turret. 
I'm not sure that's useful for bad weather flying. So, well, just everything really. Search comes with an ESM system based on the SL uh, Q32 Chapman Launch System and Search Radar. It's got its own ESM. How interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice little uh, uh, suite that's got on there. Okay. Um, and uh, Chapman has also got Search Radar. Uh, what's this searching for? Surface vessels or? Uh, surface targets, vessels, yeah, anything like mm -hmm. that. I'm just going to date link that back to the mothership, okay? Payload, 25 Sony Boos, two Torms torpedoes. You can carry two of the big, the two of the, well, I know it's in the big, there's the small ones, but for a helicopter, yep. that's a big web web. Um, APKWS, is that the laser guided rocket? Yep. Wowza, four times Hellfire missile, two times maybe Penguin IR anti ship missiles. Two times uh, fuel cells. Wowza. It's probably a side, I guess, a mounting M240 or M60 or Gal 16 or a minigun. Yep. Wowza. What a beast. Okay, that goes to the MH CTR Seahawk. Designed to combine the abilities of the previous uh, and the SH60F primary anti submarine focus. This craft can focus. Or many roles such as transport recon, anti submarine warfare, anti surface, for rep CR and more. This Hello has the Lamps 3 Block 2 upgrade, granting its abilities such as sharing a live feed through its EO FLIR and also radar. Its data sharing capabilities have been improved as well for anti submarine warfare missions. It comes with a high frequency dipping sonar and sonar buoys, but not the MAD from the. Uh, the other was was the mad, uh, the magnetic anomaly yep. detector. Roger, it can also defend itself. with Traffic dispenser, the ESM suite, missile warner, NWS, and integrated self-defense system for many miss missile. And defense system for many missile types. Right, payload uh, is similar to before, but eight times Hellfire using pylon extensions, three times uh, torpedo. I'm just wondering what it's using Hellfire for against maybe. Corvette Get surface system? targets, maybe um, maybe a tank or two. It's like whatever mm. you need them for. Three times torpedoes, likely what we saw before, and launches of the uh, laser guided uh, pack, which is really interesting. Notes from what we've been talking about some information about SM2s aren't easy to access. There may be errors, only two groups of eight cells are modified by the ESSM. While the sound's limited, this does mean that you have a max of 64 ESSMs ready if you load all the cells of ESSMs. Uh, U.S. has chosen is currently undergoing upgrades under the cruiser modernization project. These include Aegis Mark 7 Baseline 6, Aegis Mark 7 Baseline 9, Advanced Capability Build 12 or 16, sometimes mislabeled AGS, sorry, Aegis Mark 7 Baseline 12 or 16. This guy is moving to that guy. This guy is moving to that guy. This guy is moving to that guy. This guy, IFF interrogator and non-cooperative targets says something is getting. This guy moving to that guy. Remote optical system is changing to EOSS Mark 20 mod. So the old glorified TV camera is moving to a more intelligent digital system, I'm guessing that means. Well, it was a digital system. You know what I mean. Uh, more intelligent system. Mark 50 launches for the SLQ-49. So more intelligent systems there. A standard missile 6 ERAM Block 1, 1A, B, 2 1B capability. What's that say? Well, standard. Oh, right. So is it replacing Mark standard missile two with six? Uh, it's getting the software to be able to operate the standard missile six. Right. Is standard missile six used around the world, or is it still? Coming? Yep. Um. Yeah. If you look at the last one, like Michael Murphy, that's that. Um. That's that nightmare missile that can go like 300 miles and be guided by and, everything. And you know. yep. Don't even bother leaving port, basically. Right. Let's have a quick look at the ship here with the sensors on. Um, so it's hull 65 as well. So the bottom red one, is that the um, is that the uh, sonar cluster? Yep. Oh, is that at the front? Yeah, it's at the bottom front right. of the ship. So if you ever notice that little bulb, if you're yeah, looking at Yeah, I mean, it really is a bulb, isn't it? So there you go. Uh, we've got a browning there. I don't know when this picture was taken let's have a look to under uh, don't know when this sort of picture was taken we've got the gun front gun there vls pack there sp ah that's the spy one okay right that makes sense right so that's why we haven't got a giant kind of 3d radar on the top of the antenna array spg 62 so these are guiding our sms in yep. oe82 do you remember what 
What's re- oh, this That's is comms. The ultra high frequency uh, circle. Roger. More comms. Uh, SPQ9A orange is gun. That's guiding our guns. Yep. Uh, green is civilian navigation, isn't it? That's just general surface general navigation. navigation. Well, Link 16 IFF antenna. SPS 49. Uh, URN. Okay, more of that. USC 38 comms. Our Inmar Sat antenna, our USC 38, our Mark 137 Mod 10. What's that? That's the uh, SR block launcher. Oh, yeah, sort of seeing there. A Mark 15 block one. Oh, I've got phalanxes on either side. There they are, they're either side. Now, here's the thing those phalanxes can't fire forward and aft, can they? Going to shoot. Yeah, that's there. something that's peculiar. Okay. Because typically you do have one facing aft, because typically. You would face your ship aft mm. due to the fact that it gives much less of an RCS. Okay. Um, we've got the we've got more launchers there. Uh, um, uh, just you know, dispenser launchers, whatever you want to call them, tubes. Uh, SLQ thirty two. These are the ESM. Uh, yep, that's the ESM and the jammers. So there's a bunch of bulbs and things there that's probably highly classified. More SPG twos for more missiles. Uh, more communication suites there. We've got a VLS pack there. We've got Mark 32 Mod 10 on the side. What's that? That's the uh, torpedo launcher. Ah, oh, so would a torpedo just pop out of there and just ping into the sea? And... Yeah, it's uh, basically that triple launcher that you saw on the uh, destroyer. Mm-hmm. It's behind that door. Very good. Right, there you go. Very good. Uh, you got a Bushmaster at the back there. We've got a Harpoon. Ah, Harpoons are rear ships. That's Oh, there is no midships space i guess so that's why uh we've got the harpoon launcher at the back there and another gun uh and that's it d should we go and have a look at him in dcs yep and welcome back so here we have our vessel in dcs and she's yeah, she's a real beaut to be honest d i know you're a few seconds behind on the stream but it's a good solid modern model and the good thing about these yep. good solid models is we'll see later they have a decent damage model. You can blow bits off. You'll be able to blow the bridge off. You'll be able to blow the rear stack off or the antenna off. Or uh, you know, it's just a bit more cool and immersive, if that's, if that's the right word. A bit overused word, but so chosen. Yep, you're absolutely right. Harpoons, yep. rear gun, um, rear VLS pack. I just got the Bushmasters on that. Very good. Yeah, if you're able to zoom in on the uh, the launchers a bit more. You could see what I was talking about, where it's like. You've got eight cells, and you've got like that space in between them. That that'd be a, a door that opens up that right. where it vents out the exhaust gas. Right. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, helipad. Where's the hangar? It said there was a hangar, but there's no hangar. Uh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. 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 It's right where the helipad is. Right. So that door slides open. Right. So they fit them in there somehow. Right. Ah. Now here's the uh, the SP one. This is something I was thinking about. There's one antenna there, one array there, and the other arrays are whoop there and there because you always have one left, one right, one forward, one backwards. Um, yep. Interesting. Very good. Okay, lots of little cameras and stuff here. Uh, comms domes. Uh, that there is a fire contro- uh, terminal guidance for our SM2s. Yeah, although those really shouldn't be facing forward they're typically like when they're idling they're facing backwards interesting and, uh, to see if we can get them moving actually and the uh, those little things on top of the door those are lights yep very good okay we've got that we've got american flags fluttering and a bit broken but we'll don't worry about that uh that is is that the old 2d uh the old 2d military radar it must yep. be no so that's the old school radar uh, as backup, presumably. Bunch of antennas on here, mostly for comms on this uh, antenna stack at the back, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Um, these wires, are these are kind of VHF, UHF wires? Or are they just... Those... I think those ones are. The best way to tell is where they terminate. They should all terminate in a one spot. They do. Well, not all of them, but... I guess you'll catch up in a minute. But okay. Some of them are... Just uh, flagpoles, but yeah, those two right there, those are definitely mm-hmm. HF. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we've got that. Um, midships, just, you know, general superstructure. There is our ESM pack, yeah? Mm-hmm. Very good. Um, we've got 
uh, obviously vents for our uh, our uh, power plants. So that's the main antenna array. Two times for phalanxes again with the possible problem that they can't shoot forwards and backwards, which is interesting. Here is our uh, dispenser system, part of our dispenser system. Uh, a couple of M2s. Um, yep. Almost certainly going to be comms there, I imagine. Looks like it, yeah, that one's one of the uh, EHF antennas, I believe. Roger. Uh, forwards, uh, chimneys for our power plants. Looks like they forgot the SR block launchers. Uh, yeah, they, they were like here or somewhere, weren't they? I know you're behind, mm -hmm. but yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, again, here's the thing, though, because remember, stuff was taken away and added over the years. Um, it's impossible, really, to get this perfectly correct because it depends on which year you're looking at this vessel in. That's why it's so confusing. Uh, uh, search nav radar, search nav radar. Oh, here's the blue one. Yeah, well found. Uh, search nav radar. Um, Does it? Yeah, it's that, blue. Yeah. I think there's an Easter egg on that one. That doesn't say uh, Faruna. It says something else, I yeah, think. Yeah, I can't read it. Pux or Fugus or something. I can't really... I can't read that. Um, I would try to repeat it, but I'm pretty sure it gets it demonetized. Mm, I've had enough of that. Uh, domes, uh, which I think was... I think it was comms, satcoms and stuff like that. Fugus, yeah. The, yep. think it's uh, the big dome on the top would be the SPG. Right, the boys are arguing now, so that means we have to stop it. Stand by. Fugers. Uh, I don't know, guys. I think that's the best we're going to do. Roger. Uh, oops, I've just stripped over to the wrong screen. Uh, a couple of antennas sticking out there. A comms antenna of, of some variant. Yep. Roger. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. The two with the blue on the bottom is mm -hmm. HF, and then the, the round one next to them, that's the uh, TACOM. Right. Very good. Uh, we got here uh, SM2 terminal guidance radars. Him yep. and him. Yeah. Um, I, I want to see them spinning when we fire missiles out. That would be interesting. That's the four masts done. Um, part of the A, part of the SP1 forward VLS pack, obviously, uh, for doing what they do. Uh, what have we missed? Uh, forward gun. Um, got our anchors. Missing a couple of M2s on the front here. I thought it was a couple of M2s. Oh, they they used to be there. I wonder. What... Oh, found them. Okay. That'll be go. my job. I'll be sitting right at the front, going, "Ba ba ba, get some, get some, baby." Excellent. Now here's the thing: anchor on the side, anchor on the front. I've not seen that before, but I guess there's a reason I for that. I think that's supposed to be there for redundancy. More jump. Okay. Good model. Happy with it. Um, anything before we start shooting some things? Uh, no, I'm good. Roger. Um, that's it's just one thing I wanted to see. What is that? Oh, it's just like a little ladder or something. Very good. Technically, this is supposed to be a tutorial. I know it's obviously not, but let's just do it anyway. I want to move it. I'm going to go here. No, I'm not. I'm going to go uh, Coalition. I'm going to go Blue. I'm going to go Game Master or Tactical Commander. I'm going to click on the vessel. I'm going to go Set Path. I'm going to go Left Click, Left Click, Right Click uh, for a chain of waypoints. Turn his speed up. Now I can change his um, his rules of engagement to fire, return fire, or hold fire. I can change his state to whether it's green, ready. Uh, sorry, red. You know, red alert, red alert, green, what a manic. I'm not sure they even make much difference. Depth, just ignore it. That's added for uh, submarines. Now let's see if we can get him moving now. S off he goes. Uh, and uh, controlling ships in combined arms is notoriously awkward, but you know. Is what it is. Take a picture there. Uh, let's add a t uh, you can see that they do list. Um, you see his listing, which looks cool. Look at that list. Amazing. Daishi. Oh, yeah, the way the listings are actually realistic. Have you seen. Um, just. I'm trying to work this out at the moment. Is the smaller the boat, the more it lists, or is that just not right? Um, it can play into different things, like how heavy the boat is, how uh, how tight of a turn you're doing, mm -hmm. how fast you're going. All those can determine how much it, it will list when it's turning. No jump. Okay, right. Well, everyone's come here for a reason, and that reason is probably to watch things go boom, boom. So let's make that happen if we can. Um, I'm going to add a target. Now, I can't remember which is the better way of doing it. I can either attack one of these APCs or attack a bit of land. 
And just for the lols, I'll attack a bit of land. Let's see if we can get him firing. Uh, no, I can't remember the range of this gun. Oh, the gun's aimed up, look. So the gun's ready to fire. We can get that going. Oh, heck, fired missiles! What did it fire? I was not expecting that. I it's... think it just fired off a tomahawk. Hey, bless him, he's really going for it, look. Yeah, those are tomahawks. You know what, I did not expect that. Right, so here are the BGMs. Let's check what model they are. They are the, oh, the Bravos. They're the old, really old variants, though. Yeah, I mean, that's supposed to be the anti-ship version. We're concerned how they both have the same uh, warhead. I guess it wouldn't make that much difference, gameplay-wise. I wonder why he's fired so many bullets at a, uh, at a target. No, it's got this pop-up effect. It's going to go boom, boom. There is no doubt it. about it. It's going to go boom, boom. The shell reached the shore before the missile did. Yeah, well, the shell just just missed it, but yeah. Boom. Boom. How's your splash damage? Wowza. Right, well, that's some damage. Um, oh, no, it's still coming. Uh, that's, how would you feel about getting a little bit closer for some guns and some sea whizzing, uh, Daiyushi? Sure, let's do that. Stand by. Okay, welcome back, Valley Views. There it is. There it is. How do you feel about that? Uh, I'm waiting for a stream to catch. Oh. And there we go. That then waste any time. This is why we love Tico. One sexy boat. Oh, the rate of fire on it, dude. Yeah, that, yeah, that's I'm guessing it's probably just firing point detonating around so it could just go at a full 20. It is murdering. Absolutely have to kill every mother beeper in the room. And this is the way to do it, boys. Zang, 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 zang. Right, now, I know everyone wants to sit and watch all that get blown up, but Daishi's got to go to work, so I'm going to quickly put it up against something. D, what do you want to put it up against? Shoot. The only cruisers we have is the Kirov and the Slavo. Um, well, what about a what about a Chinese destroyer? They're pretty hardcore. Yeah, that could be interesting, you know, like, with its different AI. Watch out. Stand by. Okay, valued viewers, for the big fight, we've got the Tico. Um, old but cool versus what we think is going to be an excellent contemporary baddie. Well, actually, a very modern baddie, a 2007 or something like that, Type 52C Chinese destroyer, which is, let's face it, a lot smaller. Wow, look at that thing. List. Oh, the harpoons are out already. I know they're not harpoons, by the way, but I always forget their Chinese name, so. Harpoons will do. C802, I think, those ones. So you die, and they fire uh, they fire left and right and then they curve around it's such a cool thing oh look it's doing it's swishy swishy uh, gun evasion see how it's swishing left and right there so you can't get hit by guns it's a different VLS system more harpoons going out Woo. let's see what uh, Tico's doing Tico's having absolutely none of it he is literally she is I suppose yeah Harpoons have gone out and the VLS. Did you see that? The harpoons and the VLS are firing. That is saturation. And you can see yep. it there. You can see it. What's he going to do? Oh, the self defense are going out. The tours are going out. Whatever they are, I've forgotten now, but it's got self defense missiles. I think it's going to get overwhelmed. Oh, no. The J62s are oh, they're taking him down. This is terrible news. Come on, SM2. No, something's gone wrong with the SM2s. It might be that it's firing more missiles to yeah, intercept than it just, needs. Yeah, dang it. Are these VLSs? Yes, they are VLSs going up. Look at them. Ooh, you little naughty. So these, I guess you could call them the Chinese equivalent of uh, VLSs. I think they're vector thrust. They're, 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 they're going to be much more modern than the SM2 variants going out from our baby. Yeah. More harpoons going out. 
Tico's over there. Come on. Yes, we got a strike. Strike on the Chinese wonder. Wow. Yep, one got through. That's how you beat a ship. Put enough vampires out at the end of the day, isn't it? And one of them will get through. I think it might have just oh. intercepted right at the last moment. I'd still Hound. explode before it's just having its own troubles now. No, it's fine. Both full health, so no one's actually hit each other. Look at the slowness of the harpoons. We can actually intercept the other guy's missiles before they've even got halfway. Look. Look at this. Why is J62 getting intercepted? Oh, bugger. Hang on. SM2! Oh, it's such a cool fight! Boom! Good. This is a good. This is a really good fight. I really don't know. It's probably going to be at this point. I mean, they're equal in technology, kind of, but who's going to have the more ammo? Right? In the magazines. One of them's going to run I, out. I think uh, the Chinese one might be able to out DPS the Taiko. I'm not yeah, sure. Right. We shall see. He's a valiant foe. We've got the tonnage, which means we might be able to carry more missiles, etc. Also, he stopped firing. He stopped firing, D. I see that I as a sign of weakness. The, I think the missiles just haven't gone close enough to trigger the... The, uh... Oh. We'll see. I don't, I'm not buying it. I reckon he's out of VLS and Harpoon. Let's go and have a look at his launch. Ah, dang it. Off they go again. Yeah, they're going. It's the big ones. Yeah, they are vectored for us, look. That mini S300 is ridiculous. Oh, and the YJ2 and the uh, Harpoons are still coming out. Let me have a look at his uh, tubes. Oh, they self seal afterwards, that's annoying. Yeah. Alright, we're going to speed this up, valued viewers, because anti uh, ship on ship can take a long time to happen. Uh oh. Uh oh! We've got through! He's been depleted! Well, it's just up to their sea woods now, which uh, is basically up in the sneeze at. If it fires, if it fires, and it's not going to fire, that, sir, is one dead ship. Boom! Splash in your face! Why didn't wow. the Sea Whiz fire? Sea Whiz just didn't fire. It's a problem with these ships at the moment. It's all set up right. No, yeah, he's dead, man. He's dead, man. I didn't expect it to end like that. Well, that's not our fault. Right, now interestingly, he's not out of the fight, he's not out of the fight, and, wait, we are out of harpoons, sir, where are my tubes? Come on, let me see my tubes. Empty! Empty tubes. Right, that means only one thing, do you know what that is, D? Up close and personal. Guns! Stand by! Right, who's got the biggest gun? Let's find out. Okay. Yeah, I would say that... Iconderoga would try to keep it at range, but I don't think it's going to be easy to do that with the way ship's AI is. Roger. I mean, they're both all out of ammo now, basically. Now, in real life, I think those SM2s could actually aim at that ship, but he's obviously not programmed to do that. Yeah. Not sure if the HQ-10s can also. Yeah, that's interesting. They're just not, you know, they're just not programmed to do it. Are we going the right way? Uh, yeah. We are... Distance... Oh, I gotta dip out. Alright, thanks, D. You're coming. We'll finish off this match. Um, I'll see you whenever we meet up next. Well, I'll catch you then. I know what I need to do. So. I'll see you later. See ya. Okay, Valley's yours. It's just me and Yi. And I can't see the Chinese ship. I don't know about you. So, I'm not quite sure what's happening here. Are we... Oh! 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 There it is! Now, both guns... Jeez, look at the caliber, that 54 caliber of that gun. That, sir, is a sexy beast. You can see the shells if you look close enough. Let's check out our little friend. Distance between them now is 12 miles. He's got a big gun, but it's not firing. Why? Maybe we've taken out his fire control radar. Maybe one of these that's damaged is fire control radar. Either way, he is about to be in a world of poo-poo very soon. 12 miles of bullet travel is quite a long time. Ah, uh, here we go. 
in the radar guidance, but it's just art, or the shells just aren't that accurate. But the idea of a ship and ship combat is you take the guy out as maximum range possible. Oh! I've had a, a, a hit in the forecastle. Sailing on valiantly. Boom! 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 Oh, it's hitting the bow and the forecastle. There is some smoke going up now. Oh, 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 look at that! Look at that! Ship on ship combat, the best thing in DTS. Yep. Basically can't see anything now. And he's not returning fire, which means he's got an FCR problem. You can see the shells going up, maybe you can't on the stream, but I can. Oh, there's a problem with the aim. The aim's gone wrong, look. Start shouting the B word because the aim's gone wrong. He's missing. He's missing. Look at that. It's completely missing. I wonder if something's... Oh, he's firing back! No, you didn't! The Chinese are like, you want some of that? Well, come get some. Pa, 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 pa. Both guns are going. Oh, there's only one gun. Where the hell's the other gun? Tang, 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 tang. Look at this. Oh, he's getting hit. Best fight yet. Oh! Yes, he's been silenced. The superstructure's damaged. He's no longer firing. Or he's onto manual aiming. No, he's silenced. He's completely silenced. His ship are now... His, his uh, crew members are now calling to abandon ship. I don't think fire control can sort this. Yeah. Tico stopped firing. I think he probably realised this guy is doomed. The embarrassant... And he is dead. He's out of action. Interestingly, without a single, without a single speck of, oh, maybe, probably without a single speck of damage to Tico, is that? Oh no, we've hit on the, uh, we've hit on the bow there uh, and on the stern. Still got bullets in the air. Obviously, they just take a long time to, long time to fall. And they're done. Scratch surface damage to Tico. A completely damaged Type 52 C destroyer. What were the reasons for that? Uh, it's simply that uh, the Tico overwhelmed him with so much, so many rounds of uh, SM2 and whatnot that um, this guy was just completely overwhelmed and, and ran out of ammo, and that's the end of it. So, very good, fun. Um, I think that's it. Uh, thanks for D for putting all that together, um, and we'll see you later for another ship guide to Rafa now.